perfect. All right, <clears throat> welcome everybody to our back to school webinar for middle and elementary schools. Um, we are the Three Rivers region here. So the schools that were invited are from the 10 Southwest counties of Pennsylvania. I will go into a little more detail about that a little later um, and also Pittsburgh public schools. A couple of uh, housekeeping items. If you wouldn't mind having your video on, I would love to see your faces um, rather than just a bunch of boxes. But um, again, just be comfortable. So if you don't want to have your video on, I understand. But it just makes it a little nicer as a presenter to see some faces. Um, next, please keep yourself muted. If you do have a question that um, is super important that needs to be asked immediately, go ahead and unmute and ask it. But um, if you do have questions, if you could save them till the end or put them into the chat, that would be appreciated. Um, that question mark was meant to be in that comment. Um, and last, I already mentioned this, but if you hadn't already put your name into the chat and your school, please do that. And if you already did, thank you. Our agenda for today is just to introduce you to a couple people here who work with Special Olympics PA in our region, and then just go over a little bit of information about Unified Champion Schools and then what to expect for this school year. My name is Stephanie Taylor. I am a sport and UCS director here in the Three Rivers region. I work with most of the schools outside of Pittsburgh. Um, I have a colleague named Eric. He works with some Allegheny County high schools. And then we are adding another team member who will be working mostly with Pittsburgh Public. Um, so I do work with schools K through 12, but most of my schools are, um, are high schools, but you guys are some of my middle schools. So it's really nice to get to know you and to know that we're growing our middle school programming in our region. Other members from our Three Rivers Region team are um, Jenny Colbert is our new Regional Executive Director and Jenny is on the call. So Jenny, if you wanna unmute and um, say hi to everyone, uh, feel free. Thank you, Steph. Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining in. Um, Steph has done a tremendous job uh, with her work with our Unified Champion Schools and really looking forward uh, to getting to know each and every one of you and just again wanted to express my gratitude for all you're doing to make this program successful so i'm here to support in any way that i can um, but i'm going to hand it back to steph she's the expert and she's teaching me a lot as we go along so thanks everybody thanks jenny um, as you can see on the screen, we have a couple other sport and UCS directors, um, Jesse Merkel and Chase Proudfit. They work mainly with the community side of things, with the community programming. So if you see any sort of information coming from me saying community sports signups or register for fall sports or winter sports, that that's mostly who I'm going to direct you to is Jesse, Chase, or Cameron. Uh, Cameron is our regional administrative manager. So she handles a lot of the paperwork, the medical forms, all that stuff. Um, but we do work closely as a team. So if you have a question and ask any one of us, we can point you in the right direction. Um, we are very fortunate to have a youth ambassador on our staff. His name is Gabe Davis, and he goes to Ambridge High School. Um, he also is a Special Olympics PA staff member. So um, he is a fantastic hype man. He does a great job um, leading opening ceremonies. Uh, he helped us run a youth summit last year. He is just all in on everything Special Olympics. So I'm sure you will see him around at some point this year, either on some kind of a webinar call or um, maybe in person at one of our events. Um, and finally, Eric is the uh, person I mentioned earlier in the first slide. Um, him and I work together, again, mostly with high school things, but um, if you do see him, just know he's part of our team. Next, just in case you hear about it, um, our state, for Special Olympics is regionalized. Uh, we are broken up into nine regions and we are lovingly known as the Three Rivers region. We will sometimes work pretty closely with the Northwest region, which is the, um, the counties north of us up towards Erie. So um, we do a lot of things statewide, but mostly we'll stay within our region, especially for our middle school UCS. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the community side of things, um, in schools, we offer, most of you are doing unified bocce, but um, we offer a ton of sports in our community that are free for the athletes to compete in. Um, we also have unified options as well for partners or for coaches um, and all these sports listed here. On this screen, this is our 
fall and winter sport offerings. Winter sport signups are coming up soon, and we do offer a variety of sports in all of our counties. Um, so just keeping that in mind that we do have different seasons, but if you have some athletes at your school who want to get more involved, um, all of these are options for them to do, but this would be an outside of school thing. This page just has some of the spring sports offered, and then I'm going to share this presentation with you all afterwards. Our regional website is linked um, in this slide. If you just click on that link, it will take you to where they can go learn more about each of these offerings. Next, a little background about Unified Champion Schools in our state. Last year, our region, we had over 100 schools. Now, that's counting K through 12, and that's counting schools in most of those 10 Southwest counties um, and Pittsburgh public. So we have um, no schools currently in Fayette or Greene County, but we do in all of the other counties in Three Rivers region. In the state as a whole, we had 420 schools, and um, you can see these numbers here. We had a lot of competitions that we did. Um, interesting numbers. Uh, there were more unified partners than athletes last year. So just an interesting fact to point out. Um, finally, fundraising. Um, some of you I know participated in our Cool Schools fundraising last year. Statewide, we raised over $540,000. Here in Three Rivers Region, of that five hundred and forty, dollars we raised over two hundred and eighty. dollars So we had a big part um, of that number and our fundraising efforts helped the Pittsburgh Plunge make over a million dollars this year. Uh, sorry, last year, which was a state record for a single fundraiser. So um, if you were part of that, thank you so much. Um, if you saw my email today, I send that weekly email. The pages are live uh, for you to make a team if you would like to come plunge again, um, or if you wanna make your cool schools team and have that get set up already um, for either a pop at your school, a rain rally, any other kind of fundraiser you want to do, um, you can create that fundraising page through the link. Next, a little bit more um, in depth about what Unified Champion Schools are and the reports that we ask you to do. So for UCS, there are three components. The one component is the sport. So we are a sports organization. Um, we're most known for our sports, but for our UCS programming, there are two other components that are all equally important. And we really wanna make sure that our schools know that it is expected that they also follow through on the other two components, not just the sport side of things. So for that unified sport, that means students with and without intellectual or developmental disabilities are coming together to compete on the same team as equal teammates. This isn't a buddy system. It's not like we have our, our students with intellectual disabilities and they have a buddy just helping them. That's not what this is. This is equals um, competing on a team together. The next pillar um, or component is we call it inclusive youth leadership, or you might see it abbreviated IYL. This is a club. A lot of schools might have a best buddies club, a key club, student council of some sort. Um, and to make it unified means you would have co-leadership for um, the students who are involved in that club. So if you have a president, you would have co-presidents, student with and without intellectual disabilities leading that club together. That meets at least once a month. The third component is what we call whole school engagements. A lot of schools already do this, and it might be a little bit different at a middle school level. In high schools, um, you know, they have pep rallies and different things that kind of could be associated with a dance or a big football game coming up. Um, some middle schools might not have that same type of um, big event that they're leading up to, um, but we are asking that our middle schools and our high schools are completing four whole school engagement activities throughout the year. Um, this can be spread out. This could include a pep rally, like I had mentioned, um, some kind of unified sport day where you set up your bocce court, invite the whole school co to come and try it, or have a teacher versus student type of game, participating in the cool schools fundraising, coming to the plunge, having fans in the stands. If you have a competition, either versus your own team or versus another school, um, invite everyone to come watch. That would be a, a really nice thing. I saw um, last year we had one of our Pittsburgh um, elementary schools did that, and it was just a fantastic day. Um, another option is spread the word. So spread the word campaign. Um, we will send every school a mixture of items you can use for 
the spread the word event. You'll get a banner um, and that banner can be used for people to sign and pledge that they're going to be inclusive. Um, and then a couple other different items you could use, like maybe bracelets, maybe some stickers, maybe some uh, kind of things to hand out at the table. Um, so again, we're asking for four to be completed throughout the year. Uh, we are telling you early now in September because you have all the way until June to do four. So um, you have a lot of time to spread that out. But we want to make sure that we're being a little more explicit in defining what those are because a lot of people are reporting that a, a club activity, for example, like they baked cookies together as a whole school engagement. That would be more of a club activity rather than a whole school engagement. So we're trying to define and be explicit about what we are looking for when we have our reporting come through. Which leads me to my next slide, the reporting. <laughs> um, we're going to ask all schools to complete three reports. These reports are very important um, for us because we have to report back to Special Olympics North America about how we're using the funds we're given. Um, we receive a lot of grants and um, because of that, we need to report on what our schools are doing with that money that we have. So it helps us justify the extra support we provide in that programming. Now, the mid-year report and the end of year report are essentially identical. It's gonna be a Google form. It's gonna come directly from me and or our new person we hire to work with Pittsburgh Public Schools. Um, that form will just be a link. Um, we need only one per school. So if you wanna set some time to uh, get your whole UCS team at your school together to fill this out, it's gonna ask what different activities you did during a certain time frame. So for the mid-year report, that would be September through December. The end of your report, you're reporting on things from January through June. So two different chunks of time, two different reports, but only need one per school. So I recommend if you're doing some things, keep track of what you're doing uh, or let us know um, because that way you don't have to remember it all. Um, things that you might be doing here in September or October and you're filling the report out in December. So um, just try to keep note of what you're doing um, if it's a whole school engagement type of activity. The third report we call the UMass survey. So the UMass survey, you will receive a link to that in April. Um, it's a very unique link from UMass. It's not a general form like our Google Forms. Um, it's specific to your school. Um, some schools might have a blocker um, on their emails where you might not get that. So we get a report every week during the window of time for this UMass survey. And if we notice that schools aren't completing it, then I will take, um, I will send a personal email to you copying that link so that you see it coming from me and not from UMass. But um, again, University of Massachusetts will send that it's essentially the same type of questions as you will see in the other report. Um, and a lot of people at the end of the year mix up that UMass survey and the end of year SOPA report. Um, they, like I said, they are very similar, um, but we need two, we need both of them completed by every school. So three total reports. You will probably hear me say that a hundred more times this year if you talk to me, um, or you'll see it in my weekly emails um, as a reminder. All right, new for this coming school year. Um, as I mentioned, the four whole school engagement activities, uh, we made a, a uh, kind of one pager here. Um, well, it's technically two pages because it defines all of the different um, whole school engagement activities you can do. So we put three that are pretty easy to do. They're kind of almost turnkey fans in the stands. So if you're having a day where you're playing bocce and everyone's coming down to watch, invite the rest of the school down, maybe have announcements, make some posters. That can be your fans in the stands game. The spread the word inclusion. As I mentioned, you'll be getting a goodie box full of supplies and a banner to use. Please use it. We spend a lot of money to create these materials and send them to schools. And when schools don't report that they did something with it, it's um, a little disappointing because we know we spent that money to give them an opportunity to use it. Um, the third one, any school that has been on board for at least three years or more, we're requiring some sort of fundraising to help us continue to be sustainable. So that could be the cool schools fundraising or any other kind of fundraiser you're doing at your school. Um, if you're a brand new school, you don't really have to worry about that. Um, you can definitely participate if you want, but we are asking our returning schools to um, step up and 
be a part of our Cool Schools fundraising this year. Um, next, other things to expect from us, from the SOPA staff and me specifically, um, we are looking to communicate with families a little more directly. So when we send out different waivers, our SOPA waiver for your um, students to get added on to a roster. Um, the parents will have an option to opt in or opt out of further communication about community activities, events, and signups. If they opt in, we will contact parents directly. Um, we found that we have a little bit better of a turnout if we can communicate directly with them um, rather than sending it home to the teacher who has to send it home with the student who has to then give it to the parent. Um, if we can go directly to the parent, um, that sometimes is a little bit more um, of a direct line of communication to get their child signed up for these other activities. We will offer other content specific webinars as well that you are welcome to join to learn a little bit more. Oh, I see something in the chat. I'm gonna do a quick little check-in. Oh, Jenny was leaving. Um, anyone who joined uh, later, if you could please just um, add your name and school into the chat, that would be appreciated. I'm also getting a message right now saying my internet connection is unstable. So hopefully you all can still see and hear me. Okay, next. As a state, our goal this year is to add 90 new schools um, across K through 12 across the state, which means we're gonna pass 500 schools in the state, which is a pretty great milestone. Um, it's one of the highest in the whole country um, in terms of states who offer unified programming at schools. So um, it's something that we are really proud of and it's something we're encouraging our schools to celebrate. So if you wanna throw a, we're part of the 500 celebration, um, that would be a great example of a whole school engagement activity to show that you're part of something big. Um, again, another, I had mentioned this earlier, but all returning schools participating in cool schools fundraising and 100% return on all of those three reports. So I'm a, pretty persistent and I like to make sure that I cross all my T's and dot all my I's. So if I see that there's an outstanding report from a school, um, I promise you I will follow up. I will send in a personal email. I'll say, please get this done. Um, and pro tip, the sooner you get it done, the less emails you will get from me. <laughs> but um, please just once I send those out or once you get that link, um, take 10 minutes to fill that out for us. It really helps me out and it will um, keep me from that persistent follow-up um, until we get those reports in. So our focus for the fall, um, if you don't have a club at your school, um, now is the time to really get that going. Um, it can start small. It doesn't have to be anything big or kind of crazy. Um, uh, students with and without disabilities coming together, meeting together, planning different whole school engagement activities and hanging out. Next, we have um, youth summit planning. So um, if you saw my email from earlier, uh, for those of you who were on, um, I, I sent the big email, which had all the information, and I sent a follow-up specifically to the middle schools um, about youth summit registration. Um, we do have a location and a date for our middle school youth summit. I will go over that a little bit more later, but for youth summit planning, you're gonna need to choose four students, um, two athletes, two partners to attend. Um, each school can bring up to two adults as well, um, but you don't have to. You can bring just one if that we understand that coverages and taking off days can be uh, kind of challenging. And next is bocce recruitment. Um, go ahead and start getting people together to for your team. Um, for middle school, it's a little bit more flexibility in when you do your season. Our high schools have a very structured season um, that goes from November through March. Middle schools, um, you know, you can choose your chunk of time and elementaries as well. You can choose your chunk of time to do your bocce. Um, if you want to pick eight weeks in a row um, in the fall and do it and then do it again in the spring, go for it. If you want to wait until the spring, that's fine too. Last year, we held our first ever bocce middle school play day, and that was a pretty good success, I would say. Uh, we had, I believe, seven different schools attend, and um, we just had a whole day of playing bocce, which was fantastic. Um, I'd love to do that again if that is something everyone's interested in, um, and we can take a look at different 
locations or venues. Last year we were in Green Tree just because that was pretty central. Um, having our middle schools being a smaller group of the schools I manage, um, you all are pretty spread out. I mean, we've got Franklin Regional and Norwin out on the east. We've got Butler up in the north. We've got Central Valley in the west. We got South Park down south. Um, and then, you know, everything kind of in between, but um, we are very spread out. So finding a central location that can fit everyone, um, it can be challenging. So if you have any suggestions or recommendations, please let me know. All right, you Summit, our theme this year is going for gold with inclusion. A Youth Summit is just a gathering of youth leaders they all come together and start to kind of plan different school activities at their school, but they'll hear from um, other peers about what's going on um, at their schools and have a chance to network and learn from each other. As I mentioned earlier, four students and two adults can come. And for our middle school youth summit this year, again, this is for middle schools only. Our high schools have separate dates um, that we're asking them to come to. So if you're on here um, as a high school liaison, um, you'll want to make sure to register your students for the high school, one of the high school dates. This date's only for our middle schools. It will be at the Best of the Batch Foundation um, on November the 6th. Um, if you're not familiar with Best of the Batch, um, Charlie Batch is a former Steeler. He um, has a uh, a foundation that helps support different programs um, for students. And um, so this is a facility that we are going to use. It is in Homestead, which again is sort of central to most of our schools um, if we are looking at the region as a whole. Um, I un Unfortunately, some of you may have to travel kind of quite some distance to get there, but outside of Butler and Central Valley, most schools that, that I, when I looked on a map, it was about 30 minutes. So I apologize to those of you who might have to travel a little farther, but um, trying to find a central spot again is can be challenging. So this is a pretty great facility and we're excited to um, have them host us. Um, the registration link is embedded in this presentation, but it's also in an email I had sent to my middle school teachers um, earlier today. Now, a couple save the dates I would like to share with you. Um, as I mentioned earlier about community winter sports, the registration window is approaching. Um, that window will open October 15th and will be open for a month. So if you would please share um, information with your students, with your special ed directors at your school, um, letting them know um, special ed community programming goes from is all ages. We have young athletes that's ages two to seven. And then we have, we like to say eight to 80, but the age limits um, are endless. Like it, anyone could be any age. They could be 10 years old. They could be 50 years old. A lot of our athletes are older, um, mid forties to fifties. Um, so we are trying to recruit younger athletes to come participate in community events. So that's why we like to call it community integration is a big, um, goal of ours is trying to get students who are involved in UCS into the community as well. So that way, um, we can keep our numbers going and keep, um, our athlete numbers on the rise across the state. Um, Youth Summit registration due date will be October 30th. So that gives you over a month to book your transportation, to um, find those four students to come with you um, and uh, get ready for that Youth Summit coming up November 6th. Um, now that we've had our webinar here, um, we're asking that schools have at least one whole school engagement completed by December 1st. So you have two and a half months to plan something. It could be a spirit day. It could be an uh, an inclusion awareness event. It could be we I last year I believe some schools did an inclusion chain where they wrote down all the students wrote down what inclusion means to them, made a big paper chain, um, makes a good, great photo. Um, it gets everyone a chance to think about what it means to them, and then they can share with each other. Um, so one whole school engagement by December first, please. Then those reports, that first report that we ask. The mid-year report um, will be coming up in January. So that'll be due in January. And then our cool schools plunge. For those of you who are planning to attend in person, it will be Friday, February 21st. I know that's a long ways away, but it's never too early to start planning. Um, if you want to bring a group of kids down, it is during a school day. Um, please, please, please um, go for it. It is a very fun day. We have a DJ. 
We had last year, we had a dunk tank. I'm not sure if we're doing that again, but I'm pretty sure we're having a DJ again. Um, they have games. They have the pools to plunge into. We have changing tents for boys, girls, adults, um, and then um, all the other parts that go with it. The plunge is held down at the stadium, down at Akershire Stadium. So it'll be right there on our Rooney Drive with the, you know, with the big stadium as our backdrop and the city there too. So if you can make it, please do it. We've had schools come from all over our region to this in-person plunge. So um, uh, if you need to start getting anything approved by your board or by for transportation, please um, know that that's the date. Finally, we do have a lot of resources available on our website. <clears throat> so we have a youth leadership guidebook. We have our Unified Champion Schools resource page on the Special Olympics PA website. And then there's a website called Generation Unified. Um, Generation Unified is a page managed by Special Olympics North America, where there are a ton of videos that address a lot of different issues. Maybe it addresses inclusion, maybe it addresses bullying, maybe it addresses just what Unified Champion Schools are. Um, if you need ideas for an activity, you can go there. Um, and then Unified Classroom, I'm not as familiar with, but we did link a video that if it's something that you're interested in, I believe it connects to Google Classroom. I don't know how many schools use that, but if you do, please check that video out, um, that link there. All right, now I did a lot of talking, so we're going to go to a question session. I will stop sharing now, and anyone can unmute or put a question in the chat, and I will do my best to answer. Going once. Jake? Sorry, I'm used to team so i'm like trying to navigate through all this stuff that's okay uh, i came in late because i had kids so i saw that the other one was available to watch to watch again is this going to be available to watch again because i missed the beginning yep no problem yeah i will definitely i will share a link to the um recording and i'll share a link to the slides so you can click on those links um specifically but if you want to hear the information i i did record it i'll upload that to youtube and i'll send that probably next week's email Stephanie, I missed the high school one. Was there, I saw it's recorded. Is there anything yeah. different um, between the two that I might've missed in the high school one versus this one? The only thing is the youth summit date. So um, okay. just make sure you register for the high school one instead, but all, the rest of the content was the same. Um, okay. And the only other thing was something about unified fitness. So okay. um, if you're interested in that, I can send you more info, but that's, um, that wouldn't be run by a teacher. That would be run by the students. So, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. But yeah, no, um, thanks for jumping on this one. Yeah. And the other, it's pretty much the same, just different use summit dates. Okay. Um, I see a question in the chat. Are you trying to recruit more schools from Beaver County? Uh, great question, Julie. Um, we do have a list of prospect schools. So any school that does um, indicate interest in coming on board, I add them to a list. We do have a couple schools from Beaver County on that list um, for middle schools. So um, right now, Ambridge is on that list. Um, I believe Hopewell is on the list. And um, I know this is in Beaver County, but Shenango um, as well. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they are coming on board this year. It just means we know they're interested and we'll do our best to onboard them. But um, it is a little bit of a process. So Nicole says, we are currently at UCS school at our high school, not in the middle school. I am a middle school, high school teacher. How can I go about getting our middle school involved? Um, Nicole, great question. So um, if you are, you are involved at the high school level at South Fayette, you're okay. So South Fayette's involved, but you're interested in bringing it to South Fayette middle. I can add your school to that list. I was just mentioning. Um, so that way we can, um, have you on there. A lot of schools, um, if your middle school doesn't already have an, uh, official onboarded UCS program, a lot of high schools will encourage that middle school, um, interest. So you're welcome to do that. Um, they wouldn't have to do the reporting and they wouldn't necessarily be involved in some of the things that we offer through like our onboarded schools, like the youth summit and the bocce day. But to know that the interest is there, we can get you on that list. And as soon as a spot opens that you could, that they could be onboarded, 
we could get you in. So I will add South Fayette to that list. Neighbor and help all clubs, but not special clubs. That's why I would reach out to them. Okay, perfect. Um, thank you, Julie. I will definitely um I we definitely reached out to Hopewell. Um, I'll definitely reach out to Beaver as well to make sure I'm covering all those bases. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, I thought I stopped recording, but I guess.